all the false prophets had got together and they, they start calling on Baal. They started calling on Baal to light the fire and, and to be able to, to consume uh, 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 the, um, the, 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 the animal that was on there. And they was calling all day long. And Elijah began to make fun of them. They're like, he can't hear you. Maybe he's asleep. You know, maybe he's busy. You know, he just ain't hearing y'all. Keep crying. And so the prophets, they started cutting themselves, doing everything that they could to try to make Baal uh, come down and respond and he didn't respond and so that's where we are at the text where it says and the 30 verse then Elijah said to all the people come near to me so all the people approached him and he repaired and rebuilt the old altar of the Lord that had been torn down by Jezebel then Elijah took 12 stones in accordance with the numbers of the tribes of the sons of Jacob to whom the word of the Lord had come saying Israel shall be your name so with the stones, Elijah built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two measures of seed. And then he laid out the wood, and he cut the ox in pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, fill four pitchers with water and pour it on the burnt offering and the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it. The second time and he said do it the third time and they did it a third time and the water flowed around the altar and he also filled the trench with water and so you got to understand that this particular point Elijah's making a point he's saying first of all we all know that you cannot light a, a wet wood and cause wet wood to be able to ignite and go into fire. So what he's trying to do is show them that my God is able to do the impossible. That the thing that man is incapable of doing, God is able to do. And so he puts all this water on the wood. And what happened? What happens? The Bible says in the 36th verse that at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet approached the altar and said, O oh Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Jacob, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O oh Lord, answer me so that this people may know that you, O oh Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back to you. And then the the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and even the stones and the dust and also licked up the water in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell face downward and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And then Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal and do not let one of them escape. And so you got to understand here that that at this particular point in the text, God had showed up for Elijah. God had showed up and did the impossible that no man could have done. And he, he took, and the Bible says he licked up the water. He consumed all the water and he lit it with fire. And he proved to the people that he was the one and only true and living God. And at the end of the conclusion of the, the test that Elijah did, he went and he slew all of the false prophets of Baal. He killed every last one of them according to the custom of that day. And so at the end of that, after he was triumphed and in, 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 in the Lord answering and responding to his prayer, the 41st verse, verse said, Now Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the roar of an abundance of rain. Now you got to remember now, they was in a drought. They was in a famine. They have not seen rain for ages, but God had used Elijah to do the impossible. And now Elijah was going to pray to that same God to bring forth rain that the people had not seen in a long time. And so the Bible says, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of, 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 of Carmel and he crouched down to the earth and put his face between his knees and he said to his servant go up look toward the sea so he went up and looked and said there is nothing Elijah said go back seven times he said go back this right here blessed me because you got to understand that even though we pray and we ask God to respond. He may not respond the first time, but we're not supposed to be swayed by what we see. We're supposed to stand firm on our faith and our conviction that God will do the impossible in our lives. And so he said, go back. His faith was not altered because of the fact that his servant went up and didn't see any rain. He told him seven times, you go back again. I don't care what you see. God is going to respond. Go back up there and look again because rain is coming. We got to be firm in our conviction 
something that God is going to move. Don't worry about what the naysayers say. Don't worry about what it is that they, they, they don't see. Don't worry about what they don't believe. You stand firm in your convictions that what God told you is going to manifest. It is a trick of the enemy. It is one of his strategies to try to come in and convince us that God is not for us. It is one of the strategies of the enemy to come in and try to convince us that God is not going to do what he said. And so if it takes some time for God to perform, don't allow the time that laps between the time that you pray and the time that God responds shake you. Stand firm in your conviction like Elijah said. Okay, so what? I told you to go back six times and it hadn't rained yet. I ain't concerned. Go back and look again. The rain is coming. And the Bible says that at the seventh time, the servant said a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea. And Elijah says, see, I told you God was going to respond. I told you God was going to do it. All you had to do was believe in what God said and stop worrying about what you see. It is a strategy of the enemy to get us to doubt God because we're so focused on our senses, what we feel, what we see, what's tangible to us. to our, our, our senses but God moves by our faith and what we believe and what he said concerning the things that are and promises he made concerning our lives and so as a, as a result of his word that Elijah stood on rain came now this is where the enemy came in I want y'all to flip over to the 19th verse in the in, uh, uh, first king the 19th chapter because we got to understand now number one God just used Elijah miraculously First of all, he just used him to consume up the ox that was on a wet altar that was drenched with three buckets full of water all around the wood. And God soaked up the water and still burnt the wood. Then Elijah went back and he prophesied that rain was coming. Nobody believed him. They didn't see no rain. But after the seventh time of going and looking, the rain appeared. So it's clear. That the voice uh, that, that 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 God had the ear of Elijah. That when Elijah prayed, God responded. But even after this miraculous thing that God just did for Elijah, look at the 19th verse, the 19th chapter, rather. All these miracles just happened, and here we are, in the 19th uh, 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 chapter of First Kings, and it says, "Now Ahab." told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets of Baal with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and even more if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like the life of one of them. She threatened him. She sent a word that she was about to kill him just like he just killed all the, the uh, false prophets of Baal. And that's what the enemy will do. The, the enemy, one of his strategies is to scare us. He is good at scare tactics to just, just put little buzz words in our ears to make us fear what is about to happen. You know, I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard they sold our company, you know. And oh girl, I don't know. We might get the piece that we might be next. I just heard, you know, what was about to happen. You don't have no evidence of what's going to be manifest, but the enemy will put little bugs in your ear to cause you to fear to cause you to doubt that God is able to do the impossible even though he just performed miracles on your behalf even though he just answered your prayers even though he just showed you that he's able to do the impossible for you not somebody else for you yet you allow the enemy to get in your ear and cause fear to creep up in your heart and to cause you to start doubting God and that's what happened and so the text says and Elijah was afraid and he arose and ran for his life. And he came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. And he left his servant there. He got scared and he began to run. All because he heard. He forgot all about what God just did. I want to encourage you tonight to stop uh, uh, allowing the enemy to trick you. One of the tra his strategies is to trick us and to cause us to forget what God just did for us. We got to have a good memory and remember all the miracles that God has performed for us. Remember all the ways that God has done uh, made for us. Remember all the doors he's opened for us. Remember everything that he's done concerning us us and we got to remind ourselves of what God did for us when we're facing adversity and we're hearing rumors about what God uh, uh, what God is not going to do because that's all this was this was a rumor that God was not going to protect him how could you believe that God was not going to protect you after he just brought you out of, of a situation where when you got into the presence of Ahab he could have killed you instantly 
But God's hand of protection was around you. What makes you think it was not going to be on you when Jezebel sent out this rumor that she was going to kill you? And the text goes on to tell us that God has said, wait a minute, what are you doing here? What are you doing here in this place of fear? What are you doing here in this place of, of, of not belief, of unbelief that you think that I won't protect you, that you think that Jezebel is stronger than I am, that you think that the hand of, of Jezebel and all her wickedness is greater than my power and my ability to protect you? What are you doing here? Get yourself up and go back to where you belong. Let me give you another example. Let's talk about the fact that Jesus... Jesus, after he fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights, it would appear that after you have fasted and you got into the presence of the Lord and you're feeling strong in your faith, it would appear that the enemy won't mess with you when you're at that point. But we see in the word of God that Jesus, after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says that he was tempted by the devil. Don't think for one reason that just because you're focused on God and that you got your mind on him and that you're not even thinking about the world, that the enemy won't attack you right after you come off of a fast, right after you at the highest point in your ministry and you've done something great and awesome and amazing for the Lord. That's when the enemy is going to come in and try to attack you and, and, and weaken your faith. But the Bible says that when, when the enemy came after Jesus, he reminded him of what the word says. Everything that the enemy brought to Jesus, he said, wait a minute, the word says, and the word says, and we've got to be mindful of that, that when the enemy comes at us with his strategies to try to get us to, 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 to weaken in our faith and to believe what he has to say, we got to remind him what the word of the Lord has to say. What does God have to say concerning my situation? Devil, I ain't setting you. The word of the Lord says this, and the word of the Lord says that. Now get out of my presence because I'm going to stand on what God's word says and not what you have to say. Let me give you another example. Let's take a look at Job. Job was living upright. The Bible says he was living upright and all he knew how. He was living for the Lord. For some reason, we have this misconception that if I am living holy, if I'm doing all I know how to do to follow after God and to follow his precepts, that the devil is not going to bother me. Let me help you and understand something. The devil wants to keep his MVP. The devil wants to keep all of his star players. The devil is only attacking and going after people that he wants to come back and return to his side. You got to understand, if you wasn't doing nothing when you was on the devil's side, he ain't concerned about you. But if you're facing warfare day after day, night after night, you got to understand it's because you're one of his MVPs. You're one of his star players and he's doing everything that he can to get you back on his team. He wants you to get back on his team because he understands your value and and your work. He understands that as long as you're on God's side and you're doing everything you can for the Lord, that you're going to be winning souls for Christ. And he does not want that. So it is his desire to bring you back on his side so that he can use you and manipulate you to win all the souls for him and not for the kingdom of God. Let's go to first Peter five and eight. First Peter five and eight says, be sober, be well balanced and self-disciplined. We've got to stay balanced. In our faith, we've got to understand that there are going to be some highs and some lows in this faith. Do not allow the enemy to trick you to make you think that just because you're having lows in your faith, that that means that God is not with you or that you've done something wrong. No, that's just part of being a Christian. The Bible says in, in the book of Job that a man that's born of a woman is a few days and then full of trouble. We got to learn to expect trouble that is going to come in our Christian walk. And when we're well balanced in our thinking and we become disciplined in the things of God, then when the enemy comes and tries to attack, we will not be caught off guard. The Bible says be alert. I mean, we're supposed to be watching at all times. We've got to be watching. Why? Because the enemy in Philippians, the fourth chapter in the sixth verse, I'm uh, not the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, wrong scripture, wrong scripture. Uh, it, it says that, 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 that the enemy is, is seeking whom he can devour. He is doing everything that he can to seek after those that are following Christ so he can destroy us. It's not his desire just to get you off track. No, no, no. That's not the goal of the enemy. His strategy is to kill you. It is to devour you, to completely defeat you so that you will not be able to do anything for the Lord. So the Bible said we, we got to be alert. We got to be focused and understand that the enemy is coming against us to destroy us. It says that the enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry. 
He is hungry for the people of God. He is hungry in pursuit after those that have a heart for God. He is hungry for those who are focused and, and, and they're just diligent on winning souls for Christ. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived that just because you're focused, that you think that for some reason that the enemy is not going to attack you. Baby, let me help you today. He is going to come after you with everything that he has because he does not want you to do anything for the Lord. He wants everything to be done for his glory so that he can get all the attention, so that he can get all of the glory and not Jesus Christ, him and, and, and him crucified. Last scripture and then we're going to close tonight. Philippians 4 chapter verses 6 through 7 says, do not be anxious or worried about anything. It is a trick of the enemy. To cause us to always be filled with anxiety, anxiety, to always be worried about every little tedious thing. Don't you understand that the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible for us to please the Lord. The devil knows that. That is the reason why he's always trying to get in any kind of crack or any kind of crevice to cause you to doubt or have any type of anxiety or worry in your heart that makes you believe that God is not going to honor his word concerning you. But we've got to be faithful. The Bible says, how are we going to be anxious for nothing? By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continuing to make our specific request known to God. We got to stay on our face. We got to continue to pray. We got to continue to fast. We got to continue to seek the face of the Lord and not allow the enemy to put doubt in our minds. I, I, I don't know what it is about the, the more we grow in Christ and the closer we get to God. It seems like it takes long. It takes so long for God to respond. Oh, my Lord, it seemed like when we were bathed in Christ, we said, God help us. And immediately he come to our rescue. But as soon as we got a little bit stronger, it seemed like God takes longer and longer and longer to respond when we cry for him. And because he takes so long, that's when the enemy wants to come in and say, you know what? You've been praying for a long time. God still ain't responded. You know, I don't know. Maybe the Lord ain't listening to you or maybe God ain't with you. And you start thinking all these crazy things. Well, you know, did I do something wrong? Or, or did, I, did I fall out of, of favor with God? Is that the reason why God's not responding? And you cause yourself to go through all these unnecessary changes, thinking about all these things that are just in it, little uh, uh, trinkets that the devil has placed in your mind that has nothing to do with the truth. The devil is incapable of telling the truth. Everything that he plants in your mind is a lie. And the Bible says the way that we got to combat that is through prayer and petition. We got to be specific in our requests. And we got to do just like Elijah. The very first text that I talked about when we first opened up this Bible study. We got to do like Elijah. We got to stand firm in our faith. He told him to go back seven times. Each time he didn't see any rain. He didn't see any sight of rain. But he was strong and firm in his conviction that God was going to do the impossible. And that's what we got to do. We cannot be wavering in our faith. We cannot allow the enemy to come against us and cause us to doubt that God is going to do the impossible for our life. But we got to stand firm on his word. We got to be aware of these strategies. We got to be alert to the tactics of the enemy. That yes, he's going to come. And if we expect him to come, then we won't be caught off guard. That's just like if, 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 if we, we know that on Wednesday night at, at, at 1030 p.m., somebody's going to come break into our house because somebody didn't tip us off. And we sit by the window and we wait in the dark for him. Guess what? We're not caught off guard because we know he's coming. We know the enemy's coming. And we got to start being the same way in the body of Christ. We got to be alert and understand that the enemy is coming in every way possible to de devour us, to cause us not to have faith, to cause us to waver in our belief concerning God, to cause us to doubt that God is even concerned about us so that we will turn back and go the other way and do those things that's not pleasing unto God. But if we are alert to the strategies of the enemy, that we are alert to the fact that he is going to come, that he's going to be a deceiver to try to deceive us and to try to trick us into believing something that's contrary to the word of God. If we are alert and we're focused on these things, we won't be caught off guard and we can combat the strategies of the enemy through prayer, through fasting and through staying in our word so that we're reminded of the truth and the promises concerning God's word concerning us.
I want you to be alert concerning his strategies and no longer allow the enemy to come in and to wreak havoc in our lives because we're not aware of the fact that he's coming in any way he can to sneak in and to deceive us and to cause us to doubt a God that is incapable of failing, failure. We praise God that you joined us tonight. We pray that this word blessed you and that you will join us again next Wednesday at 730 and also on Sunday around 12-ish. Praise God. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, I'm Pastor Gwen.